Hello and welcome to this podcast brought to you by the Isle of Man Anti-Cancer Association. My name is Malcolm, I'm a retired consultant surgeon and throughout my career I had a particular interest in the care and treatment of cancer patients. Presently I am chairman of the Isle of Man Anti-Cancer Association. And I'm Sandy, executive officer of the Isle of Man Anti-Cancer Association and a cancer survivor. The Isle of Man Anti-Cancer Association has been in existence for over 60 years, raising funds to support Manx cancer sufferers and in recent years promoting greater awareness of the signs and symptoms of various tumours. In this podcast we want to talk a little bit about a group of cancers that arise in the head and neck region and particularly in places that we may not readily be able to see. We are not going to talk about cancers that arise on the skin, the eye, the brain or arising in the lymph glands in the neck as these will be covered in other presentations. The reason for considering head and neck tumours together is that many are relatively rare. They often have common risk factors and specialist centres are evolving in the UK where many of those with this group of tumours will be referred for treatment where they can manage the majority of these cancers as the skills required to treat these tumours are common to many of them. So where exactly do these head and neck cancers arise? They arise from the mucus lining on the lips or within the mouth, within the nose, in the throat, in the larynx or voice box, in the middle ear or in the sinuses. They also arise in the salivary glands. The protogland lies under the skin in front of each ear. The submandibular glands which reside just on the inner side of the jawbone and the sublingual glands underneath each side of the tongue. Thyroid cancers, probably the commonest tumours in this region, are increasingly being included in this group of cancers, but as they give rise to a different set of symptoms, these will be mainly covered in a separate session. The common symptoms of some of these tumours are an ulcer in the mouth that doesn't heal within a few weeks, red or white patches in the mouth that don't go away within a few weeks, difficulty swallowing or pain when chewing or swallowing, changes to your voice, often hoarseness, a constant sore throat and earache on one side, a swelling or lump under the skin on the face, mouth or neck, and occasionally other symptoms may include a loose tooth, a blocked nose or nosebleeds, and pain or numbness in the face or upper jaw. There are a number of risk factors which can increase your chances of developing one of these cancers uh, arising from the mucus lining in the mouth, nose and throat. Smoking cigarettes, cigars or pipes, the more you smoke, the greater the risk. Holding the pipe on your lip or leaving a cigarette on your lip when smoking increases your risk of developing lip cancer. Chewing tobacco or beetle squid, common in several other countries, increases the risk of mouth cancer. Drinking alcohol is linked to cancers of the mouth and throat. The more alcohol a person drinks, the greater number of years they drink, the greater their risk. People who both smoke and drink heavily over several years have the highest risk. The human papillomavirus, particularly subtype 16, is linked to oral and anal tumours and thought to be spread through oral or anal sex. Teenage girls have been offered HPV vaccination for a number of years as protection against cancer of the cervix and teenage boys are now being given a similar vaccination as an added protection against women developing cervical cancer, as well as reducing oral and anal cancers in themselves. A diet high in animal fats and low in fresh fruit and vegetables may increase your risk of head and neck cancer. Inhalation of certain dusts or chemicals increases the risk of cancers in the nose and sinuses, uh, dust such as hardwood, leather and formaldehyde. Having had x-ray treatment to the neck is also a risk factor for thyroid cancers. And a family history of head and neck cancer also increases your risk. Now there are a number of things that you can do to reduce your risk of developing one of these tumours. If you have never smoked, please do not start smoking. If If you smoke, consider stopping. On the island, we have Quit For You. This is a support service to help people stop smoking. There are drop-in clinics or one-to-one support to assist you with the decision to stop smoking. For more information, you can telephone 642-404 or visit their website, which is quitforyou.gov.im. Also, avoid alcohol altogether or drink in moderation. Follow a balanced diet, particularly remember five portions of fruit or vegetables every day. 
protect against inhaling noxious dust, especially from things like chipboard. Now, dentists are fully aware of the early signs of mouth cancers and regular dental checks can be important in picking up any lesions early. If you are concerned about any possible symptoms, as always, the first step is talk to your GP. It's best to get these checked out as getting a diagnosis early is so important to successful treatment. Remember the key symptoms. An ulcer in the mouth that doesn't heal within a few weeks. Red or white patches in the mouth that don't go away within a few weeks. Difficulty swallowing or pain when chewing or swallowing. Changes to your voice, often hoarseness. A constant sore throat and ache in one ear. A swelling or lump under the skin on the face, uh, mouth or neck. And occasional other symptoms may include a loose tooth, a blocked nose or nosebleeds and pain or numbness in the face or upper jaw. If you'd like more information on head and neck cancer, you can visit the Macmillan Cancer Information Centre up at Nobles Hospital. You can contact them by phone on 650735 or look at their website, which is macmillan.org.uk. For more information on support to quit smoking, contact quit for you on 642404 or you can visit their website, which is quitforyou.gov.im. Thank you for listening.